Hello, this is a brief walkthrough of Tag Editor version 2. If you've used our previous version of Tag Editor, most of the functionality will be familiar to you, but there is a little bit of new stuff. Uh, to use Tag Editor, the first thing you do is you select a new project. And uh, when you do, you can see that tags get saved with this dot path tag extension. So for this exercise, I'll actually create a Halloween 2 dot path tag file. By saving your project, it allows you to save your progress and then later, if you want to, load it back from disk so you can continue editing with it. So what we end up with is first this overlay layer, uh, which is the base layer. This allows you to select your uh, plating color, so copper, gold, silver, uh, or black. I'm going to use black for this project. <clears throat> you can change the border by selecting different borders in, in this uh, drop down. So we do have a variety of borders you can choose. Let's go ahead and use the rope for our project. Uh, and then if you wanted to move where the hole is, you can actually use this rotation feature to move the hole around so it's not in your way. Another thing you do here is you can set the background color of your project. So for this one, let's say, uh, say it's going to be this brown color. And that fills the background with a brown color. So now we've got <clears throat> the base of our tag uh, loaded in. One of the first things you might want to do is add text. So you do that by simply clicking the text uh, additional uh, layer thing. And then you can say something like Happy Halloween. Right? I want my, my text to be raised to metal. So you can see it automatically changes that. One of the things you have to be careful about with text is uh, it gets a little gloppy because if you want to fill it with color, first we have to outline it in metal and then fill it with color. So the outline has to be fairly thick and because of that it may bump into to letters next to uh, to you if you're too close. So one of the things you can do is change the font. Uh, that's often helpful to have a much thicker font and also the font size. So and we mess around with this a little bit and get something we like a little bit better. And we'll choose a color, let's say <clears throat> yellow, just to give us some good contrast. And it starts to give you an idea of how it may be filled in. By the way, you can just use this hand to kind of move it around, right? But you can see they're all kind of bunched up together. We can use this spacing feature to move them apart. All right? Well, now it doesn't fit, but it would if we curved it. So we can curve the text, move it around, and then using the curve radius thing over here, we can adjust how it sits on our curve. All right? So we can get it to curve down, and then we can rotate it a little bit. So you get the idea with this. I'm not going to make it perfect for the purpose of the tutorial. So you move it around and get it kind of where you want it to be. Make sure it's not too close to anything else because again there needs to be space otherwise the letters get a little bit gloppy. Um, now if I want to add in graphics I can do that in two ways. I can have a photo from my disk that I load in so I've got some stored here. I've got a candy corn graphic. It's pretty big though. See how it fills up the entire thing? I can use my graphics editor thing over here to change the size percentage and move it up and down. Now what's interesting here is I chose a color accidentally where the background of the tag is actually very uh, similar to the background of this graphic but I'll just go ahead and change the the background of the of the tag for a second to green. <clears throat> now you can see when I when I imported this, uh, there was a uh, you know this background that I don't necessarily want. One of the new tools in version two is this wand uh, tool, and so you can click this and then click the colors that you don't want anymore, and you can actually make those transparent. Okay, so once we have that cleaned up, now we just have this nice piece of candy corn. Also. I can grab images directly from my browser. So what I have here is my browser window and I can copy this image from the internet and I can paste it into the into the uh, editor. So I don't have to um, import them from my disk. If you just find something on the internet you can bring it in like this. Using the up and down of the layer adjustments allow you to put layers on top of each other so right now my pumpkins behind the candy corn and I actually want it to be on top so I can move it up and you'll see there we go 
And what I'll do now is, again, I don't want this white background, so I'll make it transparent. Okay. Going back to the candy corn, let's say we didn't want it to be yellow, orange, and white. I want it to be something else. I can choose a different color here using this color tool. And uh, let's say I want them all to be orange, right? Now I've got this uh, bucket filling tool. I can click here, click here, and click here, and it changes my colors. <clears throat> so if you import a graphic, maybe it's a black and white line image, you can use the paint bucket tool now to fill those areas to different colors if you want them to be different colors. And then finally, uh, we have the drawing layer. The drawing layer allows you to do freehand drawing. So um, let's pick a different color that we haven't used just so you guys can see it easily. There's a pencil tool here, and I can write whatever I want, right? So if I want to draw a little heart uh, or whatever I wanted to do, I can add this in. Now, personally, I'm not very good at uh, this kind of artwork, but what it would allow you to do potentially is add in a graphic like you see here and trace it right to get kind of an outline so if you had a complicated image that you wanted to simplify by tracing it you could do that potentially by adding the graphic in as a layer then tracing it and then turning off the layer like the pumpkin here right and then the final thing is let's go back to uh, our pumpkin and let's say we didn't want this nose in the middle right so we have an eraser tool and using the eraser I can actually erase elements of the graphic and what you're seeing now is actually the the transparent showing through All right. so if there was some element of this that I didn't want to have in my graphic I could use the eraser tool to erase it well let's say that was an accident I didn't mean to erase all that stuff we have an undo now the undo doesn't have a long history like a lot of graphics editing applications do but it will let you make the last thing you did go away so if you accidentally fill the wrong space or uh, erase something you didn't mean to erase it'll let you very quickly and easily uh, undo that uh, so the other thing you want to do from time to time is remember to hit the save button. It doesn't automatically save for you, but uh, when you do hit save, it, it saves all this information into a project file, and then the next time you want to open it, you find your .path tag file, and it'll open just like this. When you're all done, you can hit export, and you can say my tag, and that's that. What you see now is on my hard drive, I've got my tag.jpg, and if I open it up, it looks like it did in my editor. So this is all ready now to upload as part of an order to pattext.com. So that's how you use Tag Editor version 2. So quick tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please email support at pattext.com. Thanks.